What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you part two of the database series with MongoDB and the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So before we jump into this video, if you haven't, make sure you watch part one, which I'll link right here, where we go over the basics of getting set up with MongoDB, uh, Data API, and the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This video is an extension of that where we'll be going over the general CRUD operations you will need to start working with your database in an advanced manner and to start actually having some practical use cases by uh, using these API extensions and actually doing some operations on your database. So the operations we'll be going over in this video are create, read, update, and delete. And by the end of it, you will be able to create, read, update, and delete documents in your NoSQL MongoDB database with your Raspberry Pi Pico W. So this is the doc documentation we'll be using for reference, and I'll link this down in the description below. And the code we have today is an extension of the previous code in the video, I changed it offline, so don't get overwhelmed if you watched the previous video and it came here and the code is much different. What we're doing in this new code, to start from the very beginning, is we're actually using a sensor this time. So we're using a BME280 temperature, pressure, and humidity sensor, which I'll link down in the description below. This is a very popular sensor used in many uh, demonstrations online for Raspberry Pi, Pico W, and other microcontrollers because it's very accurate and allows you to uh, retrieve weather data very um, precisely and quickly in real time. So we'll be using that to simply get sensor data, but in reality, you can use any sensor you want or any data you want. I'm just using live data in this video just to add some reality to the work we're doing here. And we have some other imports where we're using some time to uh, add a time timestamp in our database. And other than that, um, we'll just be doing some other operations in our API differently from the first video. So don't get too overwhelmed by this new code here. There's a lot new. It's not like the, the code when I ended the first video. So I'll link this down in the description below so you guys can follow later on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bottom of this MicroPython example here, and we're gonna go through the basic CRUD operations you will need to start doing some advanced things in your database. So let's start at the very bottom here and explain these CRUD operations. So I have this main function which I'm running in MicroPython in Thani. And as you saw in the first video, I'm just connecting to the Wi-Fi. For now, we could just leave this commented because this is for another example. And we're just getting data from our BME280. And we're getting the current time, the RTC time. And we're formatting it in a specific manner just to have a user-friendly format. And we're just going to print that. And then we're just going to call this function which I define above called insert1. Now, once again, if you watch the first video, at the end of it, we called the insert1 extension on our API and we inserted one data point. This is the same thing, but I just cleaned it up and put it in a function here. So we're just passing that function of temperature, pressure, and humidity, and we're passing it the format of time. So if we go up to that function here, I'll just show you what's in there. It's actually not that complicated. What's happening is it's taking those parameters, it's setting the header for our, uh, our requests, and it's going to add this document. So we went over documents in the first video. These are just essentially rows in the NoSQL database. So you can think of it as rows in a relational database. These are, I guess, the, the NoSQL form of rows. And we're just going to have this insert payload, which is the JSON payload for our, um, for our post request. And we're just going to pass the URL. So the URL is what you get from MongoDB data API. So we're just gonna pass the URL and we're just gonna add the extension insert one. So we go up quickly to the URL, what it looks like, this is my URL. We're going to add the action here after the slash, and that action is insert one per their documentation. And we're just gonna pass the headers and the insert payload. And if everything goes right, we should insert a, a data point for pressure, temperature, humidity, and time into our database. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this and run it and show you guys how Hopefully that's successful. Everything seems to break when I make YouTube videos. So let's just give it a sec here. Okay, we can see that it's successfully inserted because we got a response of 201. Now, one thing you notice as, I, as I'm running this code, I'm running it in a continuous while loop as you could see here, but we're severely limited by the response time it takes to get from their API in this scenario. So this is one of the drawbacks of using their API. You can't necessarily work with extremely fast moving data as we get from many sensors, you know, to measure data at the, potentially the microsecond. So you can't really get down to that level when you're using the, particularly the insert one endpoint. Now that is a limitation. Um, if you're using more slow data, like weather data, in this case, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty useful and perfect. 
But in other cases where you want data down to less than a millisecond, I would suggest maybe finding another way to store data. Now there is one way to combat this. So if I go ahead and actually I pause this, what we can do instead is instead of inserting one at a time and waiting for the response, in their documentation, they have another endpoint, which is insert many. So we can insert a batch of data points as opposed to inserting one. And we could potentially use that to combat this uh, weighting of their response from the API. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment this. And we just, have a, we just have a bunch of comments just to go through each example one by one. So now I'm just gonna uncomment the document list and we're just going to uncomment all this stuff. So what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start compiling data points in a list. So it's gonna be a list of dictionaries. And then once the dictionary gets to a length of 10, we're just going to call the insert many function here. And then we're going to reset, reset the batch as, as a list of nothing. So what's happening in this insert many function, it's not too different from the original insert one. So once again, we pass in the API key, but in this case, we pass a document list, which is a list of dictionaries as opposed to a single dictionary. And we call it documents as opposed to documents, as, as you can see above there. And we're just going to add the action insert many as opposed to insert one. And that is the only difference. And this will allow us to insert batches of data points much more quickly, although not as quick as a relational, relational database that's installed onto our computer or, or we have the driver for MongoDB. This is still faster than the insert one. So this is a, a slight way to combat the slowness of their API. So let's go ahead and run this and show you how that is much faster. So we can see that quickly it produced 10 points within a, less than a second, and it's trying to insert them. And once again, another 10 points. So we can see right away that we can insert many documents by compiling them into a list and then sending it to their API. Now currently, I don't know the limit of how many documents you can insert at one time, but you guys can maybe tell me in the comment section down below. But definitely this can be more useful than inserting one at a time if you're looking for a quick response. So those are two uh, CRUD operations. We have a couple more that we'll be going over here in this video. So let me go ahead and comment this again. I really wish there was a better way to comment code in Thani. Usually I do like a mass command on my, or shortcut on my keyboard to do it, but it doesn't work in Thani. So if you guys know that as well, let me know in the comment section down below. So we're just gonna comment the document list. We're gonna comment this if statement because that's related to insert many. Now, another thing you wanna do in any database is you want to find a value. So we have this find one function. And in this find one function, what we're doing is we're passing in a temperature we're looking for and a humidity we're looking for. So in this function in particular, if we go to that, we can see that we're using another endpoint extension. First of all, find one here, as you could see. And instead of passing it a document we want to add, we're passing it a filter dictionary. So a filter dictionary are the parameters we're looking for for that specific document. As you saw, uh, the temperature and the humidity down below, make sure these are named exactly as the columns or the, I guess I could say columns in your database. So we have temperature as we named it here and we have humidity as we named it there. And we're just gonna look for those values. Now, because I, I ran this in a previous uh, setup before I was creating this YouTube video, let's go ahead and check our database to see what values are there and see if we can find one like that. So let's go to our database. Let's go to browse collections. And we can see we do have a bunch of data points. So let's just go and search for a, a temperature of 23.26 Celsius. Okay. So we're just going to do that. And then what is the humidity on this one? So we're gonna to try to find this data point. So if we did everything right, we should be able to find this data point. Now, of course, this is gonna have so many use cases when you want to find, you're searching for data that you collected, see if it exists. And of course, you could do more advanced things on top of this, such as greater than or less than uh, statements. So that's for you to go ahead and experiment with, but this is just a very simple way. So we're just gonna call the find one function, pass it in this filter and see what it gives us. So. In the end, as we're looking here, it should give us a document with ID 64 ending in 6A. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this here. Okay. 64 ending in 6A, perfect. So it did everything correctly there. And you can narrow down the search. So you can remove this and it'll search for a document with temperature 23.26C. 
Now, one thing you may be wondering is what happens if there's more than one document with this same uh, filter or the same values. So what happened is it will just show the first one that it finds. So that's a limitation of find one. Of course, that has use cases, but in some other cases, you want to find all the documents with these properties. So that's why we have the next function here that we define, which is the find function. So in this find function, it's very similar. So if we go to the find function, which is the one underneath it, once again, we pass in a filter dictionary, but we change the action, which is just find. And so what it's going to do, it's going to find all the documents, return us a list of those documents that match the filter criteria, and it's going to show us those documents. So let's go to our database and see what is a good way to test that. What are some shared uh, values here? So 25.65, 25.69. Let's just change this and see if you can find two temperatures with 25.65. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this. So I'm going to search in my database for two temperatures that have uh, degrees Celsius, 24.65 degrees Celsius. And if this is working correctly, I know I'm going to see these two documents at least, C0 and 76. So let's go ahead and run that. So once again, 24.65. And we're just going to do this, save it, and run, and give that a second there. So we know we should see at least two documents from our quick search on the UI. Maybe there's more, 24.65. So C0, and what is the other one? Okay, and 7.6, perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. So we know that is working exactly as expected, which is awesome. Um, one thing to know about searches in NoSQL uh, databases, it is typically slower than relational databases just due to the nature of the structure of, of NoSQL databases. So find operations if you're working with very large um, collections with very large, uh, let's say, parameters, it may be much slower than a relational database. So keep that in mind when you are designing your IoT application. So we're just going to go ahead and pause that. Now we have two operations left in CRUD main operations. So I'm going to head and comment this. I'm going to go ahead and comment this. And we're going to work next with the update one. So imagine you want to find a, a document with a specific uh, properties. So in this case, temperature equals some value. And you want to update it to have a temperature of another value like this. So we can do that as well. So let's go to our database and find a document we'd like to update. So let's say we want to update this to 23 point, so 23.26. We Let's say we miscalibrated our BME to 80 and we realized we had to add one uh, degree Celsius to this temperature that we measured. So we can go and do that. So 23.26 and we're gonna change it to 24.26. 23.26 and we're going to change it to 24.26 and just going to this function and showing you how it works so once again it's a function we define but it uses their API again so we actually pass a filter dictionary which is the same dictionary you use when you're working with the find function the only other extra parameter you add is this update dictionary which updates the the value of that document to to the set you define and in the set we define is just a dictionary where it just has a temperature so in this case it's actually going to delete the other parameters uh, pressure humidity time and device if we do it like this but I think there's other um, other actions here other than sets that allow you to keep the other parameters uh, as opposed to truncating them and replacing it with a new whole document so just keep that in mind. If that is confusing, let me know in the comment section down below. But there's more than one way we can essentially update a document. We can either keep the other values and update a specific value in the document. We can replace it with a whole new document. Or um, we can actually just delete the whole document. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to find a temperature with a, or we're going to find a document with a specific temperature and just replace it with a new document with just a temperature. And so if we go ahead and run this, what we're going to see is we're going to see this object ID 
instead of 23.26, it's going to be 24.26, and all of this other data is going to disappear just because we're using that set action as opposed to another action. I'm sure they have the other actions in their documentation in terms of the update, but so that's what's going to happen here. So let's hope we did it right and it finds that. And once again, it's going to find the first um, document that has that parameter because it's update one and it's going to update that. So let's just wait and see what happens. So it told us it modified it. Let's go ahead and, and stop the code there. So if we go ahead and refresh this, we'll see that, okay, we, we see exactly there, right? We see that it's, it's the same ID, but it updated the temperature, but it didn't update the, or actually it truncated the other values just due to the nature of the action of the update we had. And once again, if you want to know more about the update documentation, you can certainly read about their API here, which I'll link down in the description below. I mean, it's definitely more preferable to not truncate the remainder of the documents, but this is just for example purposes. In real life, you can do whatever you like in terms of updating your documents. Now, the last one we have is the delete one uh, function that we defined here. And by the way, there's also an update many, so you might want to do that as well. Just because I showed you the find and I showed you the insert many, I don't wanna uh, reiterate essentially the same thing. You can use the update many to pretty much update many documents at the same time as opposed to one at a time. And finally, as I said, we're gonna go over the delete one. So we're just gonna find a document with temperature uh, 25.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, let's actually do a different one because once again, that's from a previous example where I was playing around. So let's say 24.26 Celsius and we're just going to delete that. And that's pretty much how that function works. So let's just go and step into that function and show you what it is once more. So the delete one, you just pass in a filter as you do with the find function, but as opposed to the find extension, you're going to use the delete one extension and you're gonna pass in the same headers and search payload, and then you're just going to call it. So let's go ahead and run this and give it a second Yes, we're almost done with this video. It's been a long one. It, it told us it deleted one. So let's go ahead and refresh the database and make sure that is gone. So let's go ahead and refresh this. We'll probably see that that document no longer exists. And of course, if we keep running that code, it's gonna keep finding documents with 24.26 degrees Celsius and delete them. And an extension of that is you don't have to use the delete one. You can use the delete endpoint and it's gonna find all the documents. This is typically a dangerous operation. You wanna be absolutely sure before you do this delete in such a database, so just keep that in mind. And you can delete many documents at a time. So that pretty much sums it up for this video. So I taught you guys how to uh, insert, update, find, and delete documents in your MongoDB database with their data API using the Raspberry Pi, Pico, W, and their API extensions. Now we are going to do potentially a part three. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, don't forget to ask questions. Subscribe if you enjoy this video. There's, there's a lot of microcontroller content, Raspberry Pi, Pico W content, and other full stack content on this channel. So generally things for all coders if you are watching this video. I hope you guys learned something new. Stay tuned guys, thanks for watching, and take it easy.